All right. We are ready to go. Got comments already. Got people watching. Welcome to another. For, for, excuse me. This is not the right way to start out. Long enough to cover the subject, short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to a Sunday Night Live edition of Out of My League and a holy shit news break once again. I was wondering what we were going to talk about. I thought the lead was going to be talking about Ole Miss winning the national championship. I thought it was going to be, you know, LSU's recruiting buzz going around. They had uh, some big time official visitors come on this weekend, but LSU hires. The Twins, the excuse me, the first place Minnesota Twins pitching coach, West Johnson. West Johnson. It was, everyone was talking about Ostrander, and I believe um, if you look at what uh, Leah Van tweeted out, Leah Van said that Ostrander was. A candidate, the pitching coach from Southern Miss, was a candidate for the job. And let me see if I can pull it up here. Uh, Southern Miss's Christian Ostrander and UNC Charlotte's Rob Woodard were also candidates for the LSU pitching uh, job, but LSU ultimately went on to hire Twins pitching coach Wes Johnson. What a coup, y'all. This is left. I mean, people in this is, and here, here's what's uh, so there. There are several ways to look at this. One, Jay Johnson just continues to drop the ball from nobody thinking Tommy Tanks was ever going to consider any place other than Florida State, maybe Florida or maybe Miami, just because he's from the state of Florida. But it was Florida State all along, out of nowhere. He gets him. Then he gets the Vanderbilt pitcher, which actually was kind of seen over the past few weeks. There was talk of that. But he just th – th this is like – in the world of baseball, this would be the equivalent to the, the, the top offensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys leaving to become the offensive coordinator for LSU. That's basically what just happened in the world of football. Uh, so at 43 people watching, 12 people liking, let's get those likes up. I'll get to y'all's comments in a minute. Like the page and share the post. Uh, if you're new here, subscribe. We had a lot of new subscribers over the past few days. Appreciate that. But let's get those likes up. Only ask for one thing and one thing only, likes. You know, the, you, you know how it rolls around here. Um, but the question is why? I mean, this is a hell of a coup, but also it's left a lot of people in Major League Baseball, a lot of sports writers wondering, why the hell would you – I mean, with all due respect to LSU and the job that it is, he's taking a step down in practice. You are the head pitching coach, not an assistant pitching coach, not a, a co-pitching coach. You are the full-time pitching coach for the Minnesota Twins the last three years, you are number one in the division, in the middle of your season, not at the end, in the middle of your season, first place, and you are leaving that job and essentially a downgrade. But for those wondering, what, what was he making with the Minnesota Twins? The article states, according to Kyle Boddy, who's a um, – a Reds, uh, Cincinnati Reds beat reporter saying that Wes Johnson was making 350K a year with the Minnesota Twins. Sources telling me says he will be making double that at LSU. So who he will be making over 500K per year at LSU. I didn't know Major League Baseball only paid their pitching coaches that much. Uh, I don't know what the highest paid pitching coach in the Major League uh, uh, Baseball is. I doubt it's him because he's only been in Major League Baseball for three years, even though he's done a really good job. But LSU didn't really have to break the bank for this guy. I mean, they're giving – I mean, because Jay Johnson was making like 450, 450, 450K a year. This guy's going to be making over 500K, so $100,000 more? That's nothing. 
That's nothing. That's like an LSU booster going, you know, the equivalent. Of, that's an LSU booster writing a, a $100,000 check extra is the equivalent of you and I going out and buying a six pack of beer. He's getting a raise. Good for him. Uh, now, most of you are probably asking, can he recruit? Yes. He was at Mississippi State uh, in 2016. Um, and he took Mississippi State from worst to first. And I believe in um, in ERA, in team ERA, they were worst in two, and dead last in 2015. And in 2016, they finished top in ERA in the SEC just because of him. Then he, uh, Arkansas snags him away. He goes to Arkansas. He helps lead them to the College World Series in 2018. Then uh, he leaves to take the Twins job after that. So he's been with the Twins for uh, 2019, 2020, 2020, four years. So really four years. He's been at the Minnesota Twins for four years, and they are in first place. An absolute blockbuster move throughout the world of baseball. Not college baseball, the world of baseball. I'm stunned. I'm absolutely stunned. I heard rumors about what Jay Johnson's going to do is going to change the course of LSU baseball. This is a bigger this might be a bigger deal throughout the world of baseball than LSU getting Tommy Tanks. That's a great college story and a great coup, but this is just on another level. Uh, maybe he was uh, maybe he was miserable with the Twins. I've seen a lot of Twins fans perplexed right now saying, well, the Twins haven't invested in ace pitchers with uh, coming up to the trading deadline. I don't fo follow Major League Baseball, but I, I, he, either he just was unhappy in the pros and he wanted back in the college game and he's going to get a raise. Good for him. Uh, and no, as far as I can tell, he's not related to uh, Jay Johnson. But uh, holy crap, what a coup. Um, considering his track record, I, and I know we're going to look up more stuff about him in the coming days, but l considering his track record, this guy's as good as, as, as good as it gets in all of baseball, college or pro. He, he could probably take all the guys you have on your staff right now, and you could have three aces. Or maybe two aces, but but three legit SEC starting pitchers that can take you six to eight innings, uh, for three you know for one game, for for three straight days, on on a SEC weekend. Unbelievable! All right, sixty two people watching, thirty one likes. Let's get those likes up. Let's get double that. Um, hell of a day for LSU baseball. But Jay Johnson is just rolling. And changing this program. Un absolutely unbelievable. I don't know how he pulled this off besides the money. Michael Roby, great hire, pitching coach, LSU. LSU baseball is rolling chocolate starfish, baby. Sounds disgusting, but I get your point. Hugh Lipsy, will you be surprised? Uh, will you be surprised if Miles starts? In my opinion, Coach Brian Kelly did not ask Miles to stay just to keep the bench warm. No, he brought him to stay because there were only two quarterbacks on the roster. Walker Howard and um, Garrett Nussmeyer. But he also didn't bring in Jaden Daniels after saying, I don't need another quarterback, and then changing his mind and deciding to bring in Jaden Daniels. Um, he's going to play the best quarterback. Uh, Earl Morgan, we got fooled on that choice. Man, alive. Johnson can go get him and catch him, can he? He and he here's the thing he's not done in the portal. I, I don't I don't know who knew about this, but there were rumors that Johnson it was like oh in the next in the course of the next several days Jay Johnson's gonna just change LSU baseball. I thought it was Tommy Tanks and then a bunch of really great transfers coming in. This this makes sense. He had everyone fooled, everyone fooled. He had this is this is like Woodward. Thinking everybody, oh, he's going to go after Billy Napier. He's going to go after, uh, he's going to go after Lincoln Riley. Oh, maybe he'll go after Lane Kiffin. Oh no, he's going to go after Mel Tucker. And then at the last second, nope, Ryan Kelly. Nobody was talking about him. He wasn't on anyone's radar, and he still has a chance 
to be in the middle of the season coaching for his team for a championship. Same thing that happened with Brian Kelly. Unbelievable. Absolutely remarkable. Um, PLG, great week to be a Tiger. Damn straight. Doug knows, hell of a hire prior to the MLB draft might give some recruits something to think about. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up, Doug, because that was another thing I wanted to talk about is this, you're not going to get better coaching. They, they, they often say it's it's been debatable in single A and, and double A, minor league baseball. It's debatable whether or not you're going to get better coaching in college at a place like LSU or in the SEC or any other big time major program in the Big 12, ACC, Pac-12, what have you. That's always been debated. Uh, it really comes down to money. But now with NIL, which in some cases can compete for guys who are drafted a little bit later, um, not first round material, but now it's just obvious. LSU is like, yeah, we could, we're going to offer you an NIL deal to make it somewhat comparable, at least make it very comparable. And now it's like you're getting one of the best pitching coaches in all of baseball. So yeah, this this the, good good point, Doug. That that was another point I wanted to make. This gives a lot of the pitchers, not all of them, because so, two of them are going to. I think one or two of them are going to get drafted in the first round, and I just have a hard time seeing them passing up that kind of money that they're going to get. But the rest of them, and other guys in the transfer portal as well. Yeah, you you want to get better? They have the best pitching coach. One of the best pitching coaches in the in the country. Best one of the best pitching coaches at any level you'll ever get. Uh, remarkable. Eighty five people watching. Thirty eight likes. Let's get those likes up. I really appreciate it. Um, Doug knows Mississippi State and Arkansas fans are melting about this hire. They have high respect for this guy, and that's how you know it's a great hire. When the previous place that they were at, either they left for that previous place or they were at that previous place when they're either pissed off, angry, or nervous. That's when you know you made a great hire because they're they're about as biased as you can get, and they've seen the ins and outs of what he does as a coach. Twins fans, same thing. People who cover the Twins, same thing. They're like, holy crap, LSU. <laughs> I mean, LSU just got a winner. Absolutely remarkable. And it's not like you're afraid to lose him to the pros unless the pros just offer him more money a, a year or two down the line. He just left the pros. He just left a first-place team to come back to college. They would have to double his salary or pay him more than what he would be making at LSU just to entice him to go back to the right spot in the major leagues. And, oh, here's another statistic for you. So Wes Johnson, Leah Van had this. Wes Johnson was only the... Um, Wes Johnson was the first was is only Wes Johnson is only the second former college coach to go directly to an MLB dugout straight from college to the major leagues to the big time to the show since Dick Hauser was hired by the Yankees in 1980. This is only this is the first time since 1980 that's happened. I don't know if this is the only time in history that's happened. I doubt that. But this is the first time in 90, 2000, 2000, 42 years. First time in 42 years a college coach made the jump straight from college to full-time staff member in a major league uh, ball club. And he's moved down by choice, not by performance, by choice to come back to college, to LSU. Remarkable. Mm. How long have I with this interesting Michael B. How's it going, everyone? Great. Everyone seems to be in a great mood. Brandon Reese. Yeah, it's crazy when you can hire a coach from the pros. It's it's unheard of. Especially, I mean, from from a major league standpoint, you see, I, I've seen plenty of guys who are full-time assistants from the major leagues, from the NBA, from the NFL, 
guys who are coordinators, the guys who are assistant coaches, guys who are assistant head coaches, take a head coaching job in college. Never seen someone take a, I mean, it's, it's, I know he's getting paid more, but it's a downward move. It's a downward move. Getting paid more, and at the end of the day, money talks, but he just must have, it must have been other things that he just was ready to get back into the college game, and maybe he just wasn't happy, and I don't know. Wasn't performance, nothing. I'm stunned. I don't know what else to say. We'll learn more about his background in the in the coming days. I'm sure tomorrow some more stuff will get out. Uh, I'll look around, but my God. Uh, Michael B., got to admit, I know nothing about this guy to say good or bad besides he was in the pros. So, Michael B., if you're just joining us, he was at Mississippi State, uh, and in 2016, his first year at Mississippi State, he took – uh, Mississippi State's ERA from worst to first in the SEC, worst to first in one year. Then he goes to Arkansas, and he helps Arkansas go to the College World Series in 2018. Then after the 2018 season, he gets hired to be the head, you know, the pitching coach, the not the assistant pitching coach or co-pitching coach, the full-time uh, pitching coach by the Minnesota Twins. In 2019, he's been there for four years. This is his fourth year with the Minnesota Twins, and they're in first place. They're in first place. We are in, we're about to hit July. So you're halfway through the season. That's a pretty good marker that your team's pretty good. So yeah, th this guy, this guy's for real. That's just, that's just the skinny on him. Um, the cliff notes on him, but. Mississippi State fans are unhappy. Arkansas fans are nervous uh, because they know what he's all about. And Minnesota Twins fans are are frustrated and pissed off. So that's that should tell you what they think of him. Um, Lamb Lance was Johnson better than the Southern Miss pitching coach though? I don't know. See, the, the skinny on the uh, Ostrander, the the Southern Miss pitching coach Christian Ostrander, was that. He was considered one of the best, if not the best, pitching coaches that no one had heard about or best pitching coaches in general in college baseball, considering that he took kids that nobody wanted, no big-time schools wanted, and he was able to scout the right kids, see the kids that had potential, that needed just some time in the weight room, that needed um, more development, and he properly developed them. That's really sort of his genius, and that's you know what it's all about. He just it's not about just go getting the five stars. It's developing the guys that you have, and he was the best at doing that specific thing for a smaller school like Southern Miss. Nobody had a deeper staff this year than Southern Miss. I think it's I think it's pretty safe to say that, or arguably nobody had a deeper staff than Southern Miss. But I mean, this guy was doing it at an SEC level at multiple SEC schools. Mississippi State and Arkansas, and was doing it at the pros with a team that doesn't really, from my understanding and the research that I did, they're in first place, but they don't have a lot of aces. The, the Minnesota Twins haven't invested in um, an ace pitcher, and supposedly that's leaving. I'm, I'm just re going off of the reaction from Minnesota Twins fans, but that's been sort of their frustration with the team long term, even though they've they've been doing a good job lately. So, yeah, uh, he he's done he's done it everywhere. Mm. Josh Carlos, do we get another pitcher out of the portal? Oh, they're not done. They're getting a lot more out of the portal, uh, Josh. A lot more. Uh, will they get another pitcher? Absolutely. I would say they're going to get a lefty. Um, they're going to get Thatcher uh, Hurd, from, uh, who's a right-handed pitcher from UCLA. He pitched halfway through the season. He was going to be Pac-12 SEC Pitcher of the Year or whatever, and then he got hurt. Missed the rest of the season. Uh, I don't think it was anything serious, but Jay Johnson recruited him at Arizona. Uh, he ended up going to UCLA. Um, so, but he's in the transfer portal, and that the whole scuttlebutt. I mean, the second he entered the transfer portal, 
uh, Kendall Rogers reported that he thinks he's going to LSU, and it's it's stayed that way. Um, I don't know what's taking so long, but that's one name. Another lefty. Um, I don't know. I, I, I would say a left-handed closer, maybe a left-handed starter. I would say you need at least, if you're going at least, if you're going to the floor, one more ace, one more guy who can compete for a starting job. And I would say a left-handed closer, one left-handed closer out of the transfer portal. It's not including, of course, the young guys that could come in and step up and come out of your bullpen and succeed. They'll be those guys. Uh, there's one left-handed pitcher from um, New York, the number one left-handed pitcher from New York, name is escaping me, that uh, is probably coming to LSU. He's probably not going to get drafted that high, and he's probably going to end up coming on, coming on campus. Um, but I would say that's the floor right now, Carlos. Mm, bu, 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 bu. Jordan Hydad, silver linings, no Rashada at Florida, no Manning at Bama or Georgia. There you go. And Rashada was never really heavily considering LSU. He had him as a finalist, but um, he was going to Florida. And boy, B Billy Napier, the, 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 the stories out about him and his recruiting, which was the thing that he was supposed to be good at, uh, have have not been good. Not just the early results, because it's too early to tell. He just got there, but um, the stories and their commitment to NIL turns out it was all might be all bullshit. That it was all just a smokescreen. That they, they don't have really shit to uh, sell in NIL. And Billy Napier might not be what we thought he was as a recruiter. He's a great organizer and, and a great head coach of organizing the the bigger picture as a coach, but man, I do like to see Florida fans running around with their heads on fire. <coughs> 94 people watching 52 likes. Please hit that like button. 94 people watching. Holy crap. What a day, man. What a day for LSU baseball. Uh, and by the way, we will get to some questions about, um, LSU football. They did, did have some big, um, visits this this weekend and word on the street is, is that uh it went very well especially for some offensive and defensive linemen jamar kane left a little uh subtweet today to let you know how it went okay um jay johnson trying to reinvent the skip bertman years well, that's hard to do uh, in today's baseball, but definitely on offense and definitely with when it comes to pitching coach. Michael Roby, 100 in here. Hit that like button. Thank you, Michael. 99 people watching, 55 likes. Holy crap, we've never had this many people watching before unless it was football season. So 97 people watching, 55 likes. I don't only ask for one thing. If you're new here, subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell. Uh, I don't ask to necessarily share the post. Please do. But the one thing I ask, really only one thing, is that you click that like button. Just smash it. Will Smith that thing. Just smash it. All right. Doug knows Mississippi, uh, Mississippi State fan quote. They're about to have the best pitching in college baseball within two years. Michael Roby, the pitcher from UCLA is a must get. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I, I think LSU, if anything, LSU needs one more guy that can legitimately compete to be a starting pitcher. Because I think I think you've got a pl plenty enough guys currently on campus that are young and, and are, have developed and shown progress last year. You know how, I, how my feelings were about Jason Kelly. I think he did an awesome job considering what he inherited and the young guys got better and of them come, they're still going to contribute. Plus the guys that you have right now, but they need just one more guy that can compete to be a starting ace. One more guy that can be a starting weekend pitcher. Uh, but they're, they're Trust me, they're going to get more than just one. Mm -hmm. Daryl Diaz. What's up, uncle Daryl? Uh, I'm late to the party. It looks like we finally have a JJ who knows how to coach, uh, a major sport at LSU. R.D. the mayonnaise kid. Jay Johnson needs to start leading the straight 
camps because he can talk anyone into anything. Turns out, turns out, money helps though. Guarantee you the NIL deal uh, with Tommy Tanks uh, was lucrative because the the thing with Miss with Florida State fell apart, and so he started looking elsewhere. From my understanding, that's what happened. Is they fired Mike Martin Jr. and that was his guy, and um, he ultimately just said, "Well, all right, you're going to hire somebody else," even though it was Link Jarrett who was a hell of a coach. Uh, he was looking elsewhere, and they he came to LSU and Jay Johnson and the LSU boosters. They closed the deal. They got the deal done, and they 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 closed it. 112 people watching, only 62 likes. Get those likes up. Let's get to 100. Let's see if we can get to 100 likes. 100. That's the only thing I ask. Uh, likes. Subscribe if you want to. Share the post if you want to. Comments, please, if you want to. But one thing is a like. Mm, ba -ba -ba -ba. Michael B. Dang, that's quite a few feathers in his hat. Thanks for the info. No problem. PLG, I told my dad if we get Ostrander, let's go to Omaha next year. Went to my room, heard about this, and said, didn't get Ostrander, but we're still going. Let's go. What a get from Coach Johnson. Yeah. Um, get your ticket. You, you can plan your tickets to Omaha, but uh, let's just hope LSU is not the number one seed because number one seeds have not done well um, every single year. Uh, but yes, no, LSU, if, if, for, if you're wondering, you know, early returns for next season, LSU should be a favorite to one of the five favorites to win it all. They should, they should be a top five team next year easily. Considering who they're going to get left in the transfer portal, which I don't know, but they're coming. Coop DeVille, Wes Johnson's nickname is TJ, short for Tommy John. He's had lots of pitchers get Tommy John's in his stops at Arkansas and Mississippi State. Uh, Tommy John. Well, I mean, a lot of people get Tommy John, Coop DeVille. Um, I don't think that's anything he's specifically doing. Uh, also, Tommy John is not what it used to be. How good is Christian Little? I see he didn't pitch much at Vandy last year. The last time I saw him pitch was versus Mississippi State in game two of the College World Series final. Only went two innings, gave up five runs, and walked four. That was his freshman year, Coop DeVille. Uh, this year, as a sophomore, he had a 3.7 ERA. He started quite a few games. Um, let's see. It was a he, he, his ERA was okay. He's got good stuff, but he improved from what he did last year. So he has improved every single year. He's mostly a bullpen guy. So last year he was just mostly a bullpen guy this season as a sophomore for Vanderbilt. Christian Little um, was in the starting rotation, especially early on the first half of the season, but then um, mostly became back to a legit bullpen guy and uh, one of their better ones coming out of the bullpen. But he, he was just looking for a place to start elsewhere. And um, let me see if I can find... Okay, I'm going to pull up the article. Let's see. His 3.7 ERA wasn't bad. Okay, so Christian Little, uh, he posted a 3.7 ERA with 46 strikeouts, 17 walks through 38 and a half innings. Uh, though he mainly came out of the bullpen, Little did make three starts. Okay, so he made three starts, including one against LSU in May. Uh, his longest outing as a starter was four innings against Georgia when he allowed three runs on five hits. Yeah. So he's going to be a bullpen guy and he'll get developed. He'll, he'll get developed by, um, by Wes Johnson. Mm, Michael B. He got to Florida before BK got here. So I'm great with BK has accomplished so far for sure. For sure. And there will be more dominoes. Be patient. There's going to be plenty of dominoes that are about to fall for LSU football. They have some silent commits or whatever, non-committable commits, and plenty of guys in state like um, the wide receiver from uh, Shelton Sampson Jr. He's, as far as I'm concerned, he's silently committed. I don't know that. I'm not reporting that. I'm just saying 
he he shows up to campus. He shows up for unofficial visits. He showed up to camp and wasn't even there to to participate. He was just there hanging out. And all the predictions from insiders have come in. He he's so that's a one that's one that could drop very soon. Um, bu- 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 God, so many comments. Appreciate it so much. Eighty-seven people watching. Seventy likes. Let's get those likes up. Appreciate it. Um, Coop Deville. It seems like Little might be overhyped right now, but could potentially be a good one. Yeah. Um, just a. I think he's going to be a bullpen guy, but he's got a lot of good stuff. Michael Eunice, I don't care how Homer I sound, but I can't wait till the national naysayers can eat their words about BK. I do not want to hear anything else about us underperforming. Take the over on wins all day. Oh, yeah, if it's like six and a half, seven, yeah, I'm taking LSU on the over. Uh, but I will say this, Michael. A lot of these national media people, there are plenty of them who – there are plenty of them who do think that Brian Kelly will win a national championship at LSU. Um, it's just the trolls and the people who don't like Brian Kelly on Twitter sort of calling him out. Specifically, a lot of people in national media, on like the talk shows and shit like that, stirring crap up. The majority... And I mean the overwhelming majority of people within the world of college football, especially writers and recruiters and what have you, the smart people, they all have universally said that, look, Ed Ogeron and Les Miles won. Brian Kelly will win at LSU too. Don't follow the haters so much, Michael. Michael B., Will Smith, that thing. I spit water out like I almost choked my guy. <laughs> RD the mayonnaise. Uh, do you think anyone else is leaving? Um, you mean baseball? Mm-hmm. It's possible. I feel like they would have left by now because John Jay Johnson kind of knows, but if they get that other shortstop that everyone's been talking about out of the portal, supposedly there's another one coming. Um, Maybe Jordan Thompson has some thoughts, but at the same time, Jordan Thompson's kind of aware uh, where he stands and he hasn't left. Maybe he leaves, maybe he doesn't. I do think there's a a spot for him to compete at third base. We'll see. Mm, Jordan Hyde, chances of landing Dante Moore. Uh, So Dante Moore, there have been three more predictions on on three sports. and then there's been one also prediction on 24-7 sports in the past week that have Dante Moore going to Oregon. Uh, he's taken another official visit, uh, or he has planned another official visit to Oregon. He's been there. This will be his second official visit, um, if I'm not mistaken. And he hasn't been to LSU since the spring game. So, yeah, um, it looks like he's going to Oregon. And my understanding is that he's going to make his announcement next month. So probably going to Oregon. But don't here, – here's the thing about I'll say about that. LSU signed Walker Howard, who was number one consensus quarterback in the country across all recruiting sites uh, outside of maybe one or two uh, and would have been one in 24-7 sports because he was number one before he got hurt his senior year. And then they just moved him down, which is, you know, a bullshit thing, but whatever. Um, it's going to be hard for LSU to get a top flight quarterback to commit this cycle because you got Walker Howard, who some considered the best quarterback in last year's recruiting cycle. So you don't need to worry. LSU's in good hands with the quarterback position right now, as far as their depth and future is concerned. Hmm. Fire 3449. Ole Miss wins the Natty and Pearl River Community College won the Junior College World Series, and Bama still doesn't have a Natty in baseball. Yeah. Well, Bama also doesn't invest in baseball. Just their their thing. Earl Morgan, Nick, you are getting a following. Thank you, Earl. I'm trying. I'm trying. We're getting there every single day. 94 people watching, 74 likes. Please, please like the page, share the post, and subscribe if you haven't. If you're new here, we do this every Sunday night, every Sunday night at eight o'clock. Uh, just discuss the new news, stuff that's happened this past week. Um, and if you're new, subscribe and uh, li- hit that like button. 
Uh, Lance, hopefully Wes Johnson can get these pitchers to reach their full potential. Painful to watch Money and Floyd keep falling short of what they're capable of. Um, I'll disagree with you there, Lance, to some, to some extent. Money, because Money started out so hot against weak competition and then he fell off as the competition got better, there's this notion that Blake Money got worse. When in fact, Blake Money wasn't even good enough to be on the postseason roster last year, was a guy coming out of the bullpen in the midweek to a guy that was vying for a starting job and was a starter for the first half of the season and was well, really the majority of the season a starter. Now, part of that is because you had no choice. You didn't really have a lot of other options. So, but, you know, he lost like 40 something pounds. Um, he improved on a lot of things. If you watched his film from baseball guys that I trust and then Ty Floyd, for example, Ty Floyd couldn't throw a, a breaking ball or an off speed pitch to save his life. But to, at the beginning of the season, at the beginning of the season, he couldn't, he was just two fastball seamers, two fastballs. That's it. And couldn't do anything else. And then the last weekend of the season against Vanderbilt and then going into the postseason, he becomes a guy that can give you five, six, seven innings against SEC caliber competition and show a pretty good showing. So I'll disagree with you there. Look, I was bullish on Jason Kelly. Um, I think Jason Kelly is going to do a good job at Washington. He's done well wherever he's been. He just inherited a mess. But if you look at the context, um, I thought the LSU pitching staff, they did what they could. They did what they could. And they were number three ERA in the SEC for most of the season. Finished number five. That's a miracle. Um, so I'm, I'm – uh, they're going to continue to get better, but they got better this year. It just wasn't up to LSU standard is what it is. Mm. Brian Turner, LSU be able to land a top 25 class in 2023. Uh, yeah, Brian, they will. I wouldn't worry about that. Especially one, because it's look, if you're, if you're talking about football, Alabama has four commits. LSU has six. Texas A&M and all their NIL money had the greatest class in the history of college football this past year, this past recruiting class. They're number 47th in the country. The reason why it's taking so long is because all these NIL bidding wars. Kids are taking longer and to make their decision from a business standpoint. That's really all across the country. You're starting to see some dominoes fall, though, with some bigger-name guys and this past week, and you're going to see that going into next month in August. And with LSU's new NIL, uh, excuse me, with the state of Louisiana's new NIL laws, LSU will most definitely get a top 25 class. They'll get into the top, fe top 15, top 10. I'm not worried about that. Um, Sean Jay, twins pitching coach. Yep. He was at Mississippi State. Uh, if you're new, so if y'all just joining us, 107 people watching, 75 likes. Get those likes up. So if you're new here and just joining us, the Twins pitching coach, Sean, um, Wes Johnson, he was at, he has college experience. He was at Mississippi State in 2016, where he took Mississippi State from worst to first in ERA in the SEC. Then he leaves to go to Arkansas and he helps Arkansas go to the College World Series as their pitching coach in 2018. Then he becomes the Twins pitching coach in 2019, where he's been the past four years. And currently, he, the Twins are in first place. The Twins are in first place in their division. And part of, you know, a lot of that is because of their pitching. So, but he's leaving that to come back to college to LSU. And he's going to get a raise, which I find amazing that college baseball makes pays more than major league pitching coaches offer, but okay. Um, he wants to come back and recruit, do it at LSU and get more money. Maybe he just was just unhappy, but yeah, uh, this guy's the real deal. He has a lot of skins on the wall at every level, every level. Johnson and Johnson. Let's go. Yep. See the memes are already coming. Um, 
Michael B. Little probably transferred just to get away from those damn whistlers. Shaking my head. Yeah. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I'd rather Tony Vitello than the whistlers. Sacrilegious as that may be, some of you may agree with me, but I don't know. At least there are plenty of hotheads in coaching. Tony Vitello just takes it to a whole other to, to a whole other level, but the Vandy Whistlers are just the Antichrist. There's no reason for their existence, other than to bring darkness to the world. Um, Michael, can you see Coach Wanaka being promoted to hitting coach? Uh, coach Wanaka is the hitting coach. Yeah, he was his, I mean, he's a volunteer, Coach Wanaka is a volunteer assistant. Um, but he's been with Jay Johnson since all throughout Arizona. He was his hitting coach, but Jay Johnson's basically the hitting coach. Jay Johnson is basically, is very involved in recruiting and he's, he's practically your hitting coach. Uh, that's why, that's why certain coaches who are like really good at, being pitching coaches, that's their specialty. They'll hire hitting coaches full time and have a volunteer pitching coach as their assistant because that's their strength and they spend most of their time and their resources at practice helping out the pitching staff. So with Jay Johnson, I mean, it's just a guy to help him out, but Jay Johnson doesn't need to promote Wanaka to full time. You need to get a guy who can coach fielding defense and be your full-time recruiting coordinator similar and be the third base coach uh similar to what Fitzpatrick was so um I'm assuming that's what's going to happen PLG this is huge I follow the MLB uh and I can't think of a time in my albeit very short lifetime 13 years old and MLB pitching or hitting coach goes to college well you're not the only one because apparently the um Um, apparently the, uh, holy shit. Apparently the, um, sorry, I just read something on this NIL deal with Jada, Jada Rashada. Um, apparently the, the, uh, the twins, one of the twins beat reporters who just wrote a story about this has said the same thing. He says he's never heard. He's heard of college coaches taking the jump to Major League Baseball, which ha this hasn't happened since 1980. This is the first time since uh, he, Wes Johnson was the first coach since 1980 to make the jump as a full-time assistant coach to a full-time Major League Baseball uh, coach, assistant coach. But I don't think this has ever happened. At least he said in his memory, and this is a guy who's been covering Major League Baseball for most of his career, I would assume. He says he's never heard of this. So... Making history, I guess. Kenny Statler, y'all can't call me nuts. I say BK is minimum nine wins. I worry about the depth and the injuries later in the season. I think they can get to nine wins. I think they have the talent and playmaking ability to keep them in games to get to nine wins. But they would have to stay really healthy, especially at the cornerback position. Um for them to get minimum nine wins. I'm positive, but I'm also trying to be realistic. Uh, I'm a little bit more bullish on this football team than most people, but I don't know if I'm minimum nine wins bullish. Michael Roby, Bianco might transfer to Ole Miss. He has one more year. Bianco has one more year? No, he doesn't. The, oh, he, he might have the COVID year. Um, I don't know. No, I don't think Bianco's going to... I mean, Bianco had his senior day and everything. I think Bianco might be done. I think Bianco might be done. If Jordan can't throw from shortstop, he can't he can't from third. That won't go well. True, but PLG, it's it's he can throw. It's just mentally he's lost it. It got in his head mentally. Jordan Thompson, it got in his head mentally playing at shortstop. Because when you play at shortstop, the game goes by very, very quickly, and it takes a while for you to slow down. And it just, he had the yips this year. So, no, physically, Jordan Thompson is very talented, but he just mentally had, had, the, had the yips. 
Um, now he improved, believe it or not, as the season went along towards the end of the season. But, you know, I mean, think about a major error that Jordan Thompson had in the postseason. Um, but I will say, um, he no, he's very talented enough to play third. It's just a mental thing. Playing third base and playing second base is a lot easier, and the game is comes a lot slower when you're at those positions. What? Oh, thank you. Water. Um, Mike, uh, Noah Melanson, Trey Morgan, right field. Um, that depends on if, um, that depends on if, uh, that depends on if, sorry, there's a Jaden Rashada story that, um, just blowing my mind. I'll get to that in a second. Um, that depends on if Tommy Tanks was promised to play first base. Uh, I would imagine Pearson Pearson's better than Stevenson right now. I would say it depends. I would say Pearson stays at right. Pearson plays right field. Unless I'm just Joshing myself. Uh, he'll he'll play one of the outfields. I'm sure they'll figure that out. But if if Tommy Tanks was promised first base, which he was a third baseman in high school. He was projected as a third baseman and played third base all throughout high school and was considered a very good third baseman. Um, that could be an option. But from my understanding, he was promised first base or he was promised an opportunity to play first base, which is maybe you know what he wanted. He was a DH for most of his time, his one year at NC State. But if you just find better options for first base and third base, then ultimately – he he DHs. You you got it's a good problem to have. Um, Earl Morgan, the Kelly haters don't like the way he left Notre Dame. However, there's no good way to leave a team. True. And also, look, LSU forced him to do that. This is what happens when you have a rule that changes where you have to have an early signing day. This this was the unintended consequences of that. So they don't like the way Brian Kelly left, even though Brian Kelly was trying to do it the right way, the best way he could. And yet they're blaming him for the media leaking it out, even though he tried to keep it out as best he could and tried to get to his players as quickly as could. But sometimes at the end of the day, uh, Earl and everyone else listening, 111 people watching, 87 likes, get those likes up. At the end of the day, people just like to complain, especially in the media, especially on social media. So just ignore it. Uh, Daryl, Uncle Daryl, great baseball. That's my uncle, by the way. Uh, great baseball recruiting class so far. Fingers crossed that the new NIL legislation in Louisiana and the hiring of a prestigious pitching coach will convince some of the pitchers to make it to campus. Uh, yeah, th that's the hope. That's the new thing is, I mean, you knew NIL. Well, some of these kids, sure, NIL will be a thing, but I also think now for the kids who are leaning towards going pro, regardless of their NIL deals, um, for for the highest uh, for their NIL deals, I would imagine now getting a pro coach makes it slightly more enticing, along with room and board and everything else that goes along with having the college lifestyle in the SEC versus a pro lifestyle or a minor league lifestyle. Hulipsy money talks, money talks bullshit walks. Josh Carlos should have. Should we be worried about Camara's suspension coming at the wrong time and throwing a wrench into our playoff run? Any good veteran backs that we could sign? Don't say Latavius Murray. Um, yeah, that's that's the thing is that there's reports. I know one by Pro Football Talk. It's not the most credible, but they they are a legit news source for NBC Sports. Has said that. Um, Kamara's looking at a six-game suspension, which sounds about right. We we figured it was, if they were lucky, three. But in reality, he's probably going to get six because he committed a felony. It's assault and battery. So uh, he's probably going to get six. That's what I expected, and that's what's been reported by some. Uh, 
the hope is that the six game suspension is at the first half of the season, not the second half of the season. Because if it's in the first half of the season, that's better because your schedule for the Saints is a lot more manageable, especially the first five games. I see the Saints, even without Alvin Kamara, potentially starting five and five and oh, being undefeated going into the game against Joe Burrow and the Bengals. Um, God, that's gonna be awesome. Um, I would say that if he gets suspended later in the season, then that's kind of a bitter pill to swallow because he doesn't, um, let me exit out of this. This is distracting me. Uh, he doesn't, um, he can't, you know, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Holy shit. You can't have them at the end of the season because the schedule for the Saints is brutal, the second half. I mean, you're playing the Rams, the Steelers, the 49ers, um, Tampa Bay. Like, you go, you don't have a bye week until, like, November or after uh, somewhere in November. And it's a brutal, brutal, brutal stretch. The thing that worries me is that Alvin Kamara's hearing got pushed till August. If that happens, then that means that it's going to be slightly delayed with the NFL infractions committee, which means that his suspension could be delayed maybe towards October. And that's not good. Um, you, hopefully for Camara and the Saints that they will push to have this done as quickly as possible and hopefully get moved up. Unfortunately, it got moved back, but Camara could just plead – guilty or and just say, just get it over with as quickly as possible because it's going to happen either way. You'd rather have it at the beginning. Um, Doug knows. Okay. So here's, here's what I was talking about. Y'all Jaden Rashada got nine and a half million from Miami passing up 11 million from Florida. This stuff is getting crazy. Okay. So let me see where I can find this. I don't know how much some of this NIL reports have gotten a little out of hand. For example, I do know that Bruce Feldman has done his research on some kids out in the Pac-12 who were promised a car and this many millions of dollars. And then he does his research and it turns out those kids have none of those things. Those kids were just mouthing off and things got out of hand with what was being reported and what was being reported. Um, Florida has like a $10 million NIL collective. I don't know if they promised $11 million to, um, to one quarterback, but I will say there is. So here's the, the, the article. Um, Jaden Rashada's Miami deal worth nine and a half million. He turned down 11 million Tennessee supposedly offered the um, Nico kid out of California $8 million. This is believed to be the highest NIL deal for a high school recruit to date. Um, did Florida fumble the ball? Uh, so here's here's something interesting about Florida. Florida offered him more money. This is reportedly. Jaden Rashada openly talked about his fondness for the Miami coaches and the chance to make a big impact in Coral Gables. But Cispano... Who's Caspano? Hold on. Okay, so Michael W. Respano with Ford Council, apparently he's a counselor in uh, Newport, California, said the rumor mill isn't accurate this time around. Um, okay, so this is an NIL lawyer who said a lot of these rumors are out of control. Uh, he has built a reputation as an NIL lawyer representing many top football and basketball prospects, said Rashada took considerably less NIL deal by picking the Hurricanes. Jaden left millions on the table. He did not pick the highest offer. He went there because he loves Miami, the coaches, and the opportunity. Okay. Wow. Okay. Okay. So 
this NIL lawyer, uh, take him for what it's worth, who's a very well-respected NIL lawyer in California who represents Jade, uh, Jade and Rashada, said Florida's collective didn't help the Gators' chances during the run-up to F- Rashada's decision. Said Florida is the most, quote, Florida is the most dysfunctional collective in all of college football. I plan on steering my clients away from them. From my standpoint, I never ever want to deal with them again. If I weren't for if it weren't for the collective that's completely dysfunctional at Florida, he probably would have been there. On three has reached out to the represent representative of the Gator Collective for comment, but messages have not been returned at this point. Caspano went on to say he is hoping for Billy Napier to better organize Florida's recruiting efforts because he wants to see him succeed in Gainesville. Wow. Holy shit. I knew something was going up at Florida. Wow. That is unbelievable. Holy shit. Wow, that's unbelievable, y'all. Apps, I'm stunned for words. All right, let me get to y'all's comments. Um, Rocky Noggin, do you think Trey will be salty about moving to right field? No, because he's not a natural first baseman. He should be in the outfield because that's what MLB scouts are telling him he's going to be in the major leagues. He's just playing first base because he's the best option for first base right now until Tommy Tanks. Uh, now, Tommy Tanks could not be as good, but we'll see. But I something tells me Tommy Tanks was is going to play first base. Generally, the big bulky guy who can hit a lot of home runs, typically that's your first baseman. Guys like Trey Morgan are not your first baseman. He's an outfielder. So no, he's probably going to be happy because that's what major league scouts are telling him to to play. So he's like, hey, now I get to play the position that's actually going to make me money in the pros. So no, I don't think he'll be salty at all. MLB, uh, that's out of control of true, Doug. Brian Turner, they named. Hold on. They named Matt House the second best defensive coordinator in the conference. What do you think the defense will perform? I think the defense will perform very well considering he's the linebackers coach. I think the linebackers will be very well disciplined uh, just from a fundamental standpoint because their coordinator is their um uh, their coordinator is their position. Their position coach is their coordinator. The defensive line in the front is going to cause a lot of havoc, which really an elite defense has to have those things. 122 people watching. Holy crap. 101 likes. Unbelievable. Uh, if you're new here, like the page, share the page, but more importantly, I'd like you to subscribe if you're new. Um, where was I? I lost my train of thought. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, based on what he's proven and all the other defensive coordinators currently in the SEC, yeah. How good will they be? I don't know because I don't know how healthy or really how good the cornerbacks are going to be in SEC competition. Uh, I think Seven Banks can do SEC competition because he did it at Ohio State, but he's also coming off of an injury. Um. But he's he's second round potential by a lot of mock drafts, potential talent wise. And he showed that production when he was healthy. I know the Big 12 uh, first team defensive player, uh, Jerry Bernard Converse from Shreveport, played at uh, uh, Okie State. He He's a veteran guy who I think will do well and hold his own. And from my understanding, he is just a beast in the film room and a beast in the weight room, and he just he's treating it like a professional job being at LSU. So I don't think he'll be lost on the field. It's just physically how, how we'll be speed-wise going up against these types of receivers. But he's seen great receivers in the Big 12, so I, I trust that he will be sustainable and good, uh, but he's not as physically gifted as um, Seven Banks. And then you hear positive things about uh, Makai Garner from ULL, but it's just – as as physically gifted as he may be, he's coming from the Sun Belt to the SEC in one year. 
I'm, I just, there are questions to be had. I'm not saying you can't do it, but you're a, there's, there's question marks and B there's not a lot of depth behind that. That's really going to determine how good this defense can be is the health of the cornerbacks and how quickly Makai Gardner or even Jarek Bernard Converse, a veteran guy and a first team big 12 defender can handle SEC competition. Um, Chance Babin, Bianco is a normal senior and has one year of eligibility left. Okay. So he has that COVID year left. Um, I, I've heard Bianco doesn't want to coach his kids and his kids like didn't want the awkwardness of like, this was a real thing. This was the thing being talked about when Bianco was reportedly interviewing for the LSU job is would uh, his son uh, stay at LSU because like, it's a very big deal for them that he didn't want to coach his sons at that level because it's, you have to make tough decisions and it's, it's an unforgiving game and it's an unforgiving sport with only so many roster spots. Like they just didn't want to deal with that. So no, I, if he leaves, it ain't going to be for Ole Miss. Could be wrong. I mean, maybe they have a change of heart. Um, but I don't know. I just, I just don't see why. And if Leslie would have left by now, probably. Um, uh, Chance Babin, I think Tommy Tanks played third base. He played in high school and played eight games there for NC State. Yeah, I'm hearing. I see. I keep on hearing first base from people in the know, from people who are in the know, not my sources, just me, media people that I've talked to and listened to, are saying that he's going to be bidding for the first base spot at LSU, that that's what he wanted. He played third base in high school and was projected as a third baseman coming out of high school, but supposedly maybe pro scouts are telling him first base, which would make sense. He's got the body of a first baseman at the major league level. If you see a lot of first basemen, uh, I don't watch the major leagues all that much, but from the first baseman that I do know, he fits that mold, power hitter, bulky type of guy. Um, Good guy has a good glove, and uh, that's that's typically a first baseman. But we'll see. I mean, he can play anywhere. He can be DH. He can be first base. He can be third base. It's a good problem to have. You got a lot of options. Darling Diaz, ten dollars super jet. Thank you so much. It's easy. Hit the like button. Thank you, Jordan. Hi, Dad. Av's closing in on the Stanley Cup. Don't know what that means. I know what the Stanley Cup is. Don't know what Av is. Rocky Noggin, 999 Super Chat. Thank you, Rocky. Mm, this message is held for viewer. Show. Why are they taking... Okay. PLG, especially how the minors are right now, minor leagues are right now, I would much rather go to college and get an NIL deal than get drafted higher and paid a fat check than paid a smaller check and living in shitty conditions. True, and but the NIL deal in certain situations are actually comparable to um, what you would actually be making after taxes, plus paying for your own food, plus paying for your own car, plus paying for where you live. Your NIL deal is actually the exact same as you would after taxes and after expenses for a major league deal coming out of high school in some cases. I mean, if you're like a top 10 pick, first round pick, second round pick, not so much after that, like after like maybe fifth round ish, then it becomes like, okay, you're splitting hairs. Um, what well, do you really just it really, it really, it comes down to, do you really just hate going to class all that much? Do you really just hate going to class all that much? And you just hate school that much. That's really what it comes down to now at this point because money's comparable now. Room and board's better. Coaching's better. Fan base experience. Lifestyle's better. Everything. Um, all that. So it's really just a matter of do you actually just hate going to – do you hate going to class that much? That's all it is. Michael Roby. Uh, Troy Tolowiska, not returning to the University of Texas, he would be a good defensive coach for LSU. Uh, was he the pitching coach? 
Troy. Troy. Was he the? I, I'm pretty sure he was the pitching coach. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was the pitching coach. Um, upon retiring as a player, specializes in hitting and infield coach. Okay. Okay. No, that would make sense. I think he actually took an, um, I think I saw somewhere from, um, shit, where is this? I saw from Kendall Rogers that the guy from Texas, the fielding coach from Texas, he was why is it why is Texas getting rid of all their guys? I wonder. Um oh shit, where was it? I had uh, Kendall Rogers had it. He was taking some like consulting job somewhere. I mean, he could easily leave that and come to LSU. Um Oh, God, where was it? Kendall Rogers had it. I'm trying to find it, y'all. Be patient with me. Okay, Scoop. Troy Tolwiski, the leading candidate for the USC job, has decided not to be the Trojans' head coach. Tolwiski also not rejoined Texas baseball for the 2023 season. He spent three seasons with the Horns in the USC coaching search. More. Tolwiski will do some consulting in the college baseball space over the next year with the goal of eventually getting back into high-profile pro college coaching. He did a terrific job with Texas offense in three seasons with the program. Okay. So, looks like he just wants to take a break from coaching this year. We'll see. Maybe I feel like I feel like if Jay Johnson would have already gone after him, um Jay Johnson would have already gone after him at this point where he wouldn't have made his decision up by now. Okay. Mm, Earl Morgan. It would be hard without Camara, but he can't be doing that kind of nonsense. True. He did it. Look, I'm not defending Camara. He did this shit to himself. You made your bed. You gotta you gotta sleep in it. So easy. Not too surprised Napier is having recruiting troubles. He's between Saban to the west, Kirby to the north, and Cristobal to the south, arguably the three best head coaches as recruiters. So easy. It sounds like you were listening to a certain oh shit, cramp. No, oh, cramp. Charlie Horse. Charlie Horse. Ah. Charlie Horse. Okay, it's good. Uh, so easy. It sounds like you stole that from a certain episode a certain someone did back in January, I want to say. Maybe. Let's look this up. Either you're stealing or... You're simply regurgitating to me, and you are, and you already know what I'm trying to say. Either way, I consider it a compliment. Where did I say this? I said the, but, but yes, you are correct. So think of it like the military. Um, God, where is it? Uh, think of it like the military when it comes to recruiting. It's all about resources and location. You have, where's the enemy coming from each side? Boy, I swear to God, either we think, great minds think alike, uh, so easy, or you just stole my shit, stole my take. Uh, where is it? Um... So, yeah, it's basically he's getting choked out. Napier, who is the new guy on the block, I think a talented guy, but he's getting choked out from all different angles by arguably, uh, yes, the best head coaching recruiters, recruiters as head coaches in the country. Regardless of whether you think Mario Cristobal is overrated as a coach, I think he is. He is a top three recruiter as a head coach. That's with Ogeron in the game or out of the game. That's with Saban. That's with Kirby Smart. That's with anybody. He is a damn good recruiter. He will get all the the U, the South Florida kids, the state of Miami, from uh, Tampa on south to stay home. 
the state of Miami that they mapped out in the uh, the um, 30 for 30, the U. That's coming back, plus all the national recruiting that he did when he was at Oregon. And Billy Napier is spending all this time by getting all of his guys from ULL and guys with Louisiana ties to all come with him to Florida. Well, you've got to fend off Kirby and Saban in the panhandle, which has to be your spot now because Florida State's down. It has to be your spot now because you can't go south of Tampa. You can't go south of central Florida because um, a more proven head coach who's from that area, who knows all the high school coaches and has recruited that area most of his coaching career, and Mario Cristobal, is back there. So you're going to convince all these top flight recruits in Louisiana to move 12 hours from home while LSU is winning and has freer and better NIL laws in Louisiana with a good head coach in Brian Kelly? Old strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it works out. So easy. Regurgitating. Definitely not my original statement. <laughs> well, I get it. But thank you. That's a good point. It's a good good reminder. I appreciate it. And I, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. All right, we'll go a little bit longer. Um, Rocky Noggin, the Rashada situation is why other states should follow Louisiana's lead on making NIL deals private. Exactly. I think Arizona has a really good NIL uh, law in place. Um, I have to do some research on it, but supposedly it's it's really, really ahead of its time, but both Arizona schools suck right now, so it doesn't really matter. But um, there was one thing that somebody brought up, I can't remember what it was, that Arizona had that they wish L um, Louisiana had put in. But look, Louisiana's ahead of the game in the state of Florida, state of Texas, state of Alabama, a lot of states, and – they're gonna they're, they're gonna reap those benefits long term in organization because of it. It's gonna it's gonna get them caught up. It's gonna get them caught up for sure. Uh, Doug knows that lawyer represents over two hundred athletes. He's the one that struck the Nico deal, which makes made him famous. Yeah, if it's coming directly from him, I would imagine that's got some legitimacy legitimacy to it. Jordan Hydad, Avalanche. I don't know if that uh, if PLG completely agree that Tulo would be a good coach, great glove at short in the majors for a good while. He wouldn't come to Baton Rouge though. Maybe probably looking for a head coaching job. Didn't get the USC job. He probably wanted who knows Jordan Hyde can close out Tampa Bay. Like, Oh, avalanche. That's, Crabs do the dehydration. Mama knows best brought you a bottle of water. I, she brought me a bottle of water. Brought me a bottle. By the way, I'm at my parents' house because my internet's acting up. I don't live at my parents' house. I'm just here because internet's acting up. Um, she brought it to me before I got the cramps. So it was all uh, it was all uh, pre-visioned, as they say. Yeah, so here's the quote. Uh, Doug knows, Florida is the most dysfunctional collective in all of college football, Caspano said. I just... Just to say that about the Florida Gators, after all the shit they were talking about, how they had this big NIL collective. Hmm. <sighs> I fucking hate them so much. I like Billy Napier a lot, which you know makes me sad that he's at Florida, but I fucking hate them so much, y'all. I hate them so very, very, very fucking much. This is a schadenfreude moment for me. Joy in the misery of others. They can burn in hell. Except for Billy Napier. He's a saint. Doug knows. Poor God. <laughs> What do you know? All right. Let's see if I'm 
Let's see if I'm missing anything. Oh, the Gator Collective has responded. Well, let's see what they say. That's probably bullshit. I don't know. This, this, the recent comments by California lawyer Michael Caspano, that's the NIL lawyer, have been brought to our attention. Gator, Gator Collective has never had any communications with Mr. Caspano about Jaden Rashada or any recruits. Rather, Gator Collective has refused to engage in any dialogue with Mr. Caspano on numerous occasions as Gator Collective does not approve of his tactics and has no interest in engaging in activities which violate Florida law an NCAA interim policy and may put athletes' eligibility at risk. Hmm. Well, at some point, first off, the reason why the Gator Collective is releasing that is because it is against Florida law. It is against um, NCAA law rules, excuse me. So they're covering their ass by saying this. I would imagine considering that nobody has necessarily disproven the Nico kid getting 8 million from Tennessee. Who's a, who's a client of his. I would imagine Hold on. Uh, I would imagine there's some truth into what he's saying. But, wow. Either way, the cat's out of the bag. Um, so Stuart Mandel, who's, who uh, is of The Athletic, chief editor of The Athletic for college football, says, FYI, there is more than one Florida collective. That's just the Gator collective that people have talked about. Okay. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing. Regardless of who you believe, this shit's out there. Not to mention the five-star, a five-star defensive back from Alabama has, I think he's from Alabama. He's either from Alabama or Florida. Came out uh, his father came out on Facebook and said, Florida is not committed to uh, NIL and the business uh, world as they should be. Let's see if I can find it. Okay. So five-star defensive back Tony Mitchell, believes he's from Alabama. His father, Tony Mitchell Sr., says, my son has won three state titles, back-to-back, -back, number two DB in the country. Um... We are also talking, taking advantage of the business aspect of recruiting. With that being said, not only has Florida has to be more on, Florida has to be more on board with the business aspect for top recruits. All colleges have. That's why Saban said what he said. Okay, see, these are now two people. Now saying Florida's dysfunctional. So I'm tending to lean towards Florida's full of shit. And why Billy Napier constantly put out an apology letter, like, that's, yeah. So, uh, Florida's suffering. I'm so happy, y'all. I'm just so happy. Um, Jordan Hydad, surprise, John Morgan, billionaire, personal injury attorney, and UF alum doesn't do McKernan slush fund times 10. I don't know who that is, but from my understanding, Florida has never been had a great booster support system. Matter of fact, most uh, Miami kind of has, but it's been kind of sketchy. But now that it's all above board and NIL is legal, those people are now back, and it's no longer sketchy because the sketchy stuff is now legal. Uh, eight ninety-five people watching. Let's see if we can get to oh, one hundred and eleven likes. If you haven't liked, please hit like. Um, we're about to end this for, for some reason, the Florida schools, Florida and Florida state taking Miami out of it. Cause they've had booster support 
for for a long time. It's just been sketchy and under the table. Uncle Luke, um, some other guys that got them in trouble in the 2000s and in the 90s. Um, Luther, Luther Campbell, the, the rapper in the 80s, he was one of them, still is. Uh, and now they've got new ones that have come up recently because of NIL. But the Florida schools, Florida and Florida State, the public schools, have always been very dysfunctional and very nonchalant and fickle when it comes to booster support. They always have. They've been they've been behind on the on the arms race. I mean, Florida has even Florida's in the SEC. They get a big fat paycheck, and they're and they're the flagship university, and they're still behind. They were kind of behind on the arms races when it comes to facilities. So I don't know. I don't know why, because those are Florida's a big ass university in a big ass state, a state that's got more money than Louisiana does or Alabama does, even though it's split up into three major schools. But I don't know. That's they've always had this problem, and NIL has exposed it even more. And these are two different sources, and I just – I think they're just fucked. Okay. Mm. Jordan, hi, Daddy. Yeah, the NIL attorney is admitting to negotiating a price before committing, LOL. Yeah, wouldn't surprise me. Doug knows, isn't Miami in Florida? As far as I know. Um, but I don't know. I think, I think the Gator Collective just came out and – sort of wanted to cover their ass because I mean, the NCAA, I, I, I don't know what they can do with all that stuff because there's nothing Miami's doing currently right now that Tennessee didn't do or Texas A&M doesn't do or LSU's doing. Um, it's, I don't know. Uh, the, I think, I think that statement from the Florida Gators collective or one of their collectives, one of their main collectives was just, just them covering their ass because they have gotten a lot of negative publicity. And that's about as the, that's the biggest negative publicity and mark that you can get in recruiting. They are fucked. They're trying to cover their ass. So it's all formalities at this point, Doug. And it's all going to change. So easy. And all Caspano has to do is show any form of communication he had with anyone remotely related to Florida NIL Collective and paint them as liars. Exactly. The ball's in his court. I don't know why he would... My question is, is why he would... He, like, he could come out and support his client without smashing the Florida Gator Collective... So I'm wondering why there's a personal vendetta on Caspano's part, the lawyer. That's 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 where I have a question. Doug knows the lawyer gets verbiage in the contract. The contract does not constitute signing with any particular school, but the article states it's understood. That's how you get around it. Luckily, in the state of Louisiana, that will not be a problem. All right, I think we're done. Uh, 9.22 on a Sunday night. Appreciate y'all uh, watching. Appreciate the comments. Uh, great news. A lot of good discussion. Um, yeah, we'll have some episodes out tomorrow and uh, we'll see y'all next week.